try and solve the limit on the screen. While you do that, I just wanted to say quickly that we have 28 days left in this maths countdown series that I'm presently filming. So there is a lot of maths that we're going to be exploring and questions that we're going to be covering. So make sure you stick around for that. And also make sure you stick around to see what I'm counting down until. All right. So let's go straight to this limit. So the problem with this limit is this x here in the exponent. So it creates a problem for us in that if we were to evaluate the limit as it is, x going to infinity would make this extremely large. So we can't do that. And it's just indeterminate. It's, it's not possible. We can't solve it. So we have to manipulate it in some way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make what's inside my limit equal to y. So what this allows me to do is to take the natural log of both sides. And that's important because once I can take the natural log of both sides, I can use my log laws to take this x out of the exponent. Because we identified this x here in the exponent to be the problem. So taking a natural log allows us to, to make this x a coefficient of the natural log. So now we have a limit that's, or we can make this into a limit that's a lot easier to solve. So let's take the limit as x approaches infinity of both sides. I won't bore you with writing this out, so let me just copy and paste it quickly. So there we go. We're taking the limit as x approaches infinity of both sides. But this still poses a problem to us, because the coefficient of x, when it goes to infinity, will make this whole thing an infinity times by whatever this evaluates to, which will be zero, because x here will become infinitely large, so what's inside this, uh, this sign, which is a fraction, will become infinitely small, so it'll become zero, or it'll approach zero, and sine of zero is zero, so we'll have the natural log of one plus zero, which is the natural log of one, which is zero. So we'll have infinity times by zero, and that's indeterminate once again. So we need to do something else to make this even more solvable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x into the denominator. So if I divide through by 1 over x, it's the same as multiplying my numerator by x. So now what we can do is we can evaluate this limit on the right-hand side using L'Hopital's rule. So, so the limit as x approaches infinity. Now we take the derivative of this numerator. So the derivative of natural log, it becomes 1 over 1 plus what's inside the natural log, sine of 1 plus sine of 4 over x is what's inside the natural log, so that goes to the denominator. And let's just make some space here. I don't want it to be confused with this 1 over x that we've moved here into the denominator. So we've not finished solving the derivative of this natural log. So now we need to do the chain rule. So what's inside the natural log, we need to derive that. So the derivative of 1 plus sine of 4 over x. So the derivative of sine of 4 over x is going to be cosine of 4 over x. And then the derivative of what's inside sine is going to be what the derivative of 4 over x. So it's going to be times by negative 4 over x squared. So that's our numerator. Now the derivative of our denominator is simply going to be negative 1 over x squared. All right. So what does this simplify to? Having this denominator here is the same as saying our numerator divided by negative 1 over x squared. So that's the same as saying multiplied by negative x squared. And if we're multiplying by negative x squared, that x squared and that x squared are going to cancel, and that negative and that negative will cancel. And we'll be left with just neatening this all up. We'll have 4 times by cosine of 4 over x all over 1 plus sine of 4x. Okay, now let's see if we can evaluate this integral, this limit. So we take the limit as x approaches infinity. What's inside this cosine is 4 over x. And as this x becomes infinitely large, our fraction becomes infinitely small because we are dividing 4 by an extremely large number. So it gives us an extremely small number. And that number, as our x approaches infinity, will become smaller and smaller and smaller until it eventually approaches 0. So we say the limit becomes 0. So we have 4 times by cosine of 0, which is 4 times by 1. So our numerator will just be 4. And in our denominator, we have 1 plus 
And now, once again, for what's inside the sign, it's 4 over x. And as x approaches infinity, that becomes 0. So sine of 0 is 0. So 1 plus 0. So this limit is equal to 4. But we're not done yet, because that's the limit of the natural log of y. However, we need to solve for the limit of y, because we made this function equal to y. Well, we have this being the limit as x approaches infinity, the natural log of y. So the natural log of y, if we had that in the exponent of e, it's just the same as y. So then if we took the limit as x approaches infinity of this, what we'd have is this, where we take the limit up into the exponent because e is a constant. And we know the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of y is equal to 4. So our final answer is e to the power of 4. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting. And if you did, please don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.